Hello friends, welcome to UGC E PG Patshala. I am Dr. Poonam Sharma, Associate Professor, Department of Geography, Shaheed Bhagat Singh College, University of Delhi. Today, I am going to discuss about this module on spatial gradient analysis, an example from city population density. This module is for the paper Quantitative Techniques in Geography. Let us begin this session and try to understand the characteristics of geographical data. Some of the geographical characteristics show a declining relationship with the distance. For example, in a city, the density of population is found to be highest at center of a city and as we move away from the center it keeps on declining up to the periphery of the city where it is found to be minimum. This kind of spatial relationship is also known as distance decay function. The rate of decline of any phenomenon with respect to distance or any other characteristic is known as its gradient. Thus, the decline in the population density in a city from its central business district to its periphery is measured in terms of population gradient. Thus, population density gradient can be defined as a spatial variation in population density with respect to area within a city. In considering the study of population, the density gradient has been referred as the change in population density of an urban area from the city center to its periphery. The principle of distance decay also operates on phenomena such as volume of migration from an origin to a destination keeps on declining as distance between them increases and altitude of an area falls down as we move closer to the sea level etc. The study of distance decay function assumes an special significance in geography as it highlights the underlying impact of geographical force on the society. The intensity of the distance decay relationship is evaluated by the corresponding gradient with which it operates under different situations. Thus, the distance decay functions, thus the distance decay function will show a high gradient in areas where central business district area is highly developed but outside it may be vacuum of urban facilities. On the contrary, in another situation of a city with the balance urban facilities throughout the city may show a moderate gradient in distance decay function. Colin Clark, an economist in 1951 based on a study of 36 cities first proposed a formula to describe the pattern of population density in any city. In order to simplify the study of urban population density and the comparison of its results, Colin Clark established two general hypotheses. Number one, in almost all cities of developing world excluding areas of cities dedicated to business and commerce, the central part of a city exists with high population density, which decreases when moving away from the center. 
This phenomena is typical in most of the developing cities across the world. As an explanation of the decline of population density, as an explanation of the decline of population density between city center and its suburbs, it has been suggested that it has been suggested that the activities closer to the city center occupy vertical spaces on an expensive land consuming little space by household and the activities at the periphery of a city at the periphery of the city consumes much space at cheaper land rent since the land consumed by each household increases with the distance from the city center, population density therefore must drop. The urban density may be seen as a logical extension of urban land use theory. The second hypothesis says, in most of the cities in the developed world, with time the density becomes constant in the central areas and increases in the suburbs. Thus, city expense its territory. This is because of the fact that in recent years there has been a larger growth of population in the suburb, in the suburban parts of the urban areas because of the rapid use of land for residential and other urban, pur and other urban purposes as the urban amenities at low prices are available in comparison to the city center. Thus, cities are becoming more flat and spatial pattern of population density tends towards unification when peripheral areas of the cities accommodating more population. Figure 1 shows a fast decrease of population density in developing countries giving a fairly higher value of the gradient of population density with respect to distance, while this curve becomes more curvilinear for developed countries where rate of decline of population density with respect to distance is found to be slow and will give a moderate gradient of population density with respect to distance. Figure 1 shows spatial gradient of population in developing and developed countries. On the basis of the first hypothesis, there exists a negative relationship between the distance from the urban center x and the density of the population on the y-axis. On the basis of the first hypothesis, there exists a negative relationship between the city center from the urban center and the density of population. As the distance increases away from the city center, the density of population decreases. For the purpose of density gradient analysis, a functional model of space known as distance decay model is used. It shows that the spatial interaction falls off with the distance. It is represented as f equals to a d dash 2, it, is, it was presented by in Pareto's model. In this model, f shows the interaction between two places and d shows the distance between them. The negative exponent of 2 shows inverse relationship between the interactions and the distance. In general, distance decay is a geographical term which describes the increasing effects of distance on economic, culture and spatial interactions between places. The distance decay effect states that the interaction between two locales decline as the distance between them increases. With the advent of faster travel, distance has less effect than it did in the past except where places previously well connected by railroads for example have fallen off the beaten path. Advances in communication technology such as phones, radios, television, broadcast 
and internet have further decreased the effects of distance. Distance decay is graphically represented by a curving line that swoops concavely downward as distance along the x-axis increases. Distance decay can be mathematically represented by the, by the expression i equals to 1 upon d square where i is the interaction and d is the distance among other forms. It also weighs into the decision to migrate leading many migrants to move less far they originally contemplated. Distance decay is also evident in towns and city centers. It can refer to the number of pedestrians getting further from the city center to the central business district, the street quality decreasing as the distance from the center increases as well. The quality of shops decreases as the distance from city center also increases. The heights of buildings decreases as the distance from the city center increases. The price of land decreases as the distance from the center increases. Features of density gradient analysis. They include number one, pattern of relationship is negative. Number two, working principle model is the distance decay model. That is, as the equation says, here where dx represents population density d at a distance x from the city center. Here is the central density. E is the exponent of distance and B is the density gradient or the rate of diminishing population density with a distance from the center. A negative exponential decline is seen. The model shows a non-linear relationship between the distance and population density. In order to find out a linear relationship, a logarithmic transformation of distance decay equation is necessary. Thus, we get the logarithmic equation of the population density with reference to the distance, the centrality and it forms, it is and it is a linear form of distance decay equation. We can look into some examples here. In order to understand the spatial gradient of population in Guwahati city, the gradient analysis is pursued for which ward wise population data were collected from Guwahati Municipal Corporation for year 2001. In figure 2, spatial pattern of population density in Guwahati is seen. In the table 3.2, I have shown you the uh, ward wise data of area and population of Guwahati city. Table 1 will give you the glimpses of area and population of the wards of Guwahati city. Now look at table 2, it provides you the details about population density in different wards of Guwahati city and here comes the actual example that I have wanted to show you. Table, in table 3 you can see calculation for the distance decay model. The column x shows you the distance from the city center and y is the population density. You can see the mean values for y are 3.709 and for x it is 4.61. The equation gives you the result minus 0 0.109. If we put the values and try to find out the decay factor, you can see 4.211 minus 0.109x for the city center and for the zone 1 and the value comes out to be 4.211. The plots of population density and its log transformed values subject to distance from the central part of the city were made to show the trends of density decay in Guwahati city. In figure 3, population density gradient analysis of Guwahati for the year 2001 can be seen. 
The graph indicates that from the observed values of population density, it is seen that location of population density in the city is quite significant. It ranges between 21,705 persons per square kilometer in the city and just 1,913 persons per square kilometer in the periphery. The value of BG is very less that shows steep slope of distance decay curve in Guwahati city. An overall pattern in decline of population density in respect to distance from the city center shows very steepness within a radius of about 2.4 kilometers from 21,705 persons per square kilometer to 7,316 persons per square kilometer. It then becomes a moderate up to a distance for about 4 kilometers. That is 6,100, that is 6,125 persons per square kilometer. And then it falls gently, and then it falls gently towards the periphery. Analysis of distance density relationship reveals that the gradient is very steep. The observed central density is found to be significantly higher than the expected one. Likewise, the peripheral density also deviates positively from the trend line. Because of the new residential areas gradually coming up there. However, in the extensive portion of the middle areas, the observed density is significantly lower than the expected density. This is because of the presence of low-lying areas, swampy land and forested regions and so on. This middle area of the city in particular together with the peripheral ancillaries needed together with the peripheral ancillaries need further development for balanced and sustainable development of the urban areas like Guwahati Municipal Corporation. I hope you have understood the concept of spatial gradient analysis, an example and case study from the city for population density. I hope you have understood the concept of spatial gradient analysis, an example from city population density. See you next time. Thank you for visiting and listening to the session. Goodbye.